Algeria, the largest Arab country in the world and the biggest on the African continent. Beaches and some tourism, but not always the most open of countries or the easiest in which to find out about its people. This film goes inside a part of Algerian family life that has survived the centuries. Rich in tradition, spectacle, and celebration. Welcome to the traditional Algerian wedding. <laughs> to see three weddings, the preparations and the ceremonies. And food will play a very big part at all of them. There's Khadija and Abdurrahman's, a huge event in Tlemcen in a hired venue, an extravagant display of tradition, dance and noise. Sabrina Harakat and Ali's and Mascara in her home. And Rania Braxis in Tlemcen. Rania is to marry Sufyan in his home, also in Tlemcen. The preparation started months previously with Rania and her mother looking back at her wedding photos years before. Many women might resent parental interference these days including Algerians. But Tlemcen is a conservative city. And in the Braxi family, Rania's mother will play a big part in the preparations for the wedding, with her daughter's blessing. Today, Rania is getting ready for the family of her intended to come and ask for her hand in marriage. So she has to look her best. لكن الزواج التقليدي بصفة خاصة في الجزائر يتم عن طريق تعارف بين الأمهات يعني أم العريس وأم العروس بحيث أن أهل العريس يروحوا لأهل العروس في دارهم يطلبوا إيدها من دارهم وبس يتم الموافقة تولي ملك ليه بمعنى أنها خطيبته The female members of Sufyan's family arrive at Rania's house dressed in costumes decorated with silk and with gifts of Algerian traditional almond and honey cakes. Sufyan's mother, sisters and other female relatives are visiting Rania's family to meet them formally, but also to check out Rania close up. نقول لها بنتي خاصك الراجل كي يشوفك مرأة تعرف حقوقك وواجباتك هذه هي هذه في الدنيا تعرف إحنا عارفين التربية إحنا عارفين كيش نقول لك المرأة دي تقيم عيالها وخيالها على شختاريناكم على كل شيء وقال لك كل صبعة وصنعة إيوة جميلة خصنا نشوفوا العروسة
When Rania enters, everyone greets her with high-pitched ululations, or UUs for short. <laughs> Rania's future mother-in-law formalizes the engagement by offering her a ring. She also presents Rania with a series of gifts, ancient jewelry, embroidery, and traditional costumes that represent the influence of the Spanish region of Andalusia on the culture of the Algerian city of Tlemcen. Rania's family responds by serving their guests a host of delicacies made with almonds and other nuts, flavored with rose water and citrus. Milk, a symbol of purity and good luck, is also on the menu. And finally, the women bless the Prophet Muhammad, committing both families to the engagement. Mascara, 200 kilometers east of Tlemcen, and the birthplace of Amir Abdel Qadir, leader of Algerian resistance to French colonial rule in the 1800s. Mascara has its own traditions and heritage, but its weddings are not unlike those in other parts of Algeria. It is also home to the Harakat family, and their daughter, Sabrina, is about to meet her future mother-in-law. Sabrina's mother calls her to join the meeting of the two mothers. She's quite shy, but, like Rania, kisses her future mother-in-law as a token of respect, a tradition inherited from her own grandmothers. يتفاهموا باش يجيو الرجال من بعد وهذا هو اللي نسموه الكمال الحاج جلالي جئناك اليوم نطلبوا منك المساهرة The Algerian marriage process differs from other cultures and faiths in that it can take anything between a month and a year The Fatiha is a meeting between the men of the two families in which they agree the couple will marry when ready This gives them God's blessing and is effectively the religious ceremony After the Fatha, and to celebrate the union between the two families, the men drink milk from pottery cups, decorated with designs coming from Amazigh, the culture of the Berber people of Algeria. The milk represents purity and is served with dates, a symbol of sweetness. You're going to see a lot of food in this film. Here, the men enjoy dishes like olive tagine with grilled chicken and couscous with almonds and nuts. The 
then there's prune tagine with honey, decorated with pineapples and toasted almonds. And the fatha ends with an assortment of traditional Algerian delicacies served with tea, as the aroma of sweetness and light fills the air. As you can tell, food accompanies every stage of the marriage process. So both families in our first two weddings have met, and the two engagements formalized. The next preparation phase is a series of shopping expeditions. In many Western countries, the bride and groom often send their guests a list of gifts they'd like to receive. But in a traditional Algerian wedding, the groom provides the dowry and the house for the couple to live in. So the bride and her family have to furnish the house, and that means hours and a lot of money spent selecting colorful fabrics and furniture. There are plenty of markets and stores for brides-to-be and their mothers to visit in their quest for furnishings. Ottoman-style curtains, cushions, covers, sheets and blankets are all on their shopping list. The bride pays particular attention to furnishing the bedroom. She has to strike the right balance between tradition and practicality. Sabrina is also looking at things to wear at the Turkish bath. But the most time is spent choosing the bride's many outfits for the day itself. Rania's mother makes all the key decisions for her daughter. تبدا العروسه توجد في التروس تاعها واللي هو بزاف كبير حتى انه كاين مثل شعبي يقولوه في الجزائر انه زواج ليله تدبيره عام بمعنى ان العروسه تقعد طول السناك طول العام وهي توجد لهذا العرس لانه العروس لازم تكون في ابهى حله ليها تكون بزاف هايله بزاف روعه تكون ملكه في ليله عرسها ولهذا تقوم بتخيط كل الالبسه اللي تحتاجها في ليله عرسها اللي تلبسها واللي هي ليله التصديره There's an amazing array and mix of styles from the karaku from Algiers a two piece suit embroidered with gold and silver and worn with the traditional arab trouser to the gandura from Constantine a long velvet gown embroidered with gold thread to costumes from other regions of Algeria. All these embroidered dresses show the pride that Algerians take in their cultural identity and ancestral heritage. For the clothes that you prepare for the clothes, it is very difficult for you. You have to use the clothes and the clothes that are difficult to use and difficult to use. أوسي لي زاكسيسوار لي تكت لي تلبسهم العروس بزاف إلا قيد دخلوا في الألبسة بالنسبة للألوان العروس إلا قد تكون انتليجنت في اختيار الألوان اللي تكون ألوان فاتحة ألوان اللي تعطي الفرح والتفاؤل اللي تجعلها ملكة في ليلة عرسها مسألة الكلفة هي فعلا تكاليف باهدة جدا سواء على عاتق العريس أو على عاتق العروسة لأن العريس لابد أن يقوم بشيء مهم جدا ألا وهو الدفوع الدفوع هو أن يدفع لها ثمن معين على غرار الطقم من الذهب 
مثل البارور او نقولوا بارور او مسيبعات مسيبعات نسبه لانها سبعه اساور لهذا سميت بالمسيبعات هناك المسكيه هناك الخامسه الخامسه عندها دلاله رمزيه عندنا الا وهي ان تحفظها من العين وهي غاليه جدا فكل يعني الذهب خاصه في الاونه الاخيره فهو مكلف وغالي جدا ان شاء الله صباح سعيد and Algerian gold jewelry is heavily influenced by Islamic and Andalusian designs. Like these armbands with different shapes inlaid with precious stones. Or the set of seven bracelets. The Mesquia necklace and, of course, earrings are all essential items. Another traditional touch is a long necklace with a large oval pendant called the Kravash Bulahia. and these dazzling gold rings. Door, door, ya sa'ib al-kaas wa al-fanjan wa li zid fi al-nishwan wa yidhuwi haad al-mkaan huwa al-andil wa al-shim'a wa al-tariya wa al-naghma m kul al-haan The next stage on the way to Sabrina's wedding in Mascara is the Hanna party. This is an all-women event at Sabrina's house at sunset on the eve of the wedding day. The groom's female relatives arrive carrying itba, a decorated handmade basket containing expensive gifts, outfits, perfumes and jewelry. The contents are displayed before the guests amid more yuyus and popular wedding songs. Hanna is a symbol of joy and happiness, and rose water a symbol of love and kindness. Mixed together, they double the bride's good luck. In the heightened atmosphere, Sabrina's mother-in-law puts the newly crushed Hanna mixture into the bride's palm, witnessed by the female guests. It has to be freshly crushed Hanna. Ali's mother then shows up the gold jewelry she's brought for her daughter-in-law as a token of generosity and respect. The more money gifted at a wedding, the prouder and happier both families will be. Generosity is an important feature of Algerian society. It matters. And a wedding is a full expression of this aspect of the people in their culture. After the henna party, surprise, surprise, more food. Sabrina's family serves roast lamb with couscous and sauce rouge. The wedding's tomorrow, so no one's going hungry in Mascara.
حنينا جابها العرض حنا يا حنينا جابها العرب تربطها للا العروسة بخوة مدهان تربطها للا العروسة بخوة مدهان in more conservative Tlemcen, Rania's Hanna party is also in full swing. The tradition here is for the mother-in-law to put a gold coin with Hanna in the bride's hand, covered with an embroidered white glove. Then she puts the Algerian jewel, the Khayt al ruh on Rania's forehead. The name means the thread of the soul, and this one studded with gold and precious stones. This is a more upmarket celebration than Sabrina's in Mascara. More restrained, maybe. But Rania, her sister, and the rest of the girls are still up for a gentle, rhythmical dance. Lots of smiles, and Rania looks both radiant and happy. In a moment, we'll finally get to wedding day. The grooms will have their henna parties. Armed horsemen will charge and fire volleys in the air. And we'll top off the night with Khadija and Abdul Rahman's amazing extravaganza. Sabrina Harakat is marrying Ali in Mascara in Western Algeria. Dania Braxi is marrying Sofian in Tlemcen. The families have agreed to both marriages and the Fatha, effectively the religious ceremony, has taken place weeks, sometimes months before. The evening before the big day, the girls have held their Hanna parties and on the same night, it's Ali's turn. His henna party is in his own home, with the older women in the family close by, and the younger ones in the background. The celebrations are based on Algerian tribal war dances. Ali's mother uses some of the Hanna, remaining from Sabrina's Hanna party, to put in her son's hand. Sabrina and Ali's wedding in Mascara is relatively modest, but there are a lot of guests, which means they all have to be fed. Food is a really important part of the events and the hospitality. The groom's family hosts this meal during the wedding day, either at their home or at a hired venue. While in the kitchen, all kinds of exotic dishes are cooking. From Al-Harira, 
a local spicy meat and vegetable dish, to roasted meat and minced meatballs. Dessert is sweet prune tagine with dried currants and roasted almonds. Accepting an invitation to this meal is a way for friends and relatives to show their respect to the groom and his family. في القديم كان العرس الجزائري سبعة أيام والسبع ليالي ودركة ولا بس ليلة واحدة لأنه حسب القدرة الشرائية والقدرة الاقتصادية للناس. The next step for the happy couple is more of a public appearance than the kind of ceremony you'd see in other cultures and religions. It takes place at Sabrina's house and starts with the entrance of the bride and groom to the accompaniment of drums and al qarqabu music. Even at a relatively modest wedding celebration, the bride might wear as many as seven or eight different outfits. To start with, Sabrina wears the traditional dress from the eastern city of Constantine, the Gandura Furgani, a long black velvet gown embroidered with gold thread. And then they come back dressed in white, symbolizing chastity and purity the closest equivalent of a Christian or Western wedding dress. This is a moment of true celebration. The bride and groom, in wedding clothes, sitting together as a sign of their new union, with the female members of their families sharing in their joy in dance. Next, the moment the bride ceremonially leaves her parents' house, a statement of the couple's new married status. كاين طقوس ثانية اللي هي تروح ترفد السكر وتقيسو على لي زانفيتي معناتها انه فال انه كل ايامها مع اهل زوجها وزوجها عائلتها الجديدة تكون كلها حلوة ان شاء الله For a family in Mascara hosting a traditional wedding observing tradition is important and the fantasia performance on horseback is part of that A group of armed horsemen in full battle dress charge in formation. Also called the game of gunpowder, it's based on the military traditions of the Berber and Arab desert horsemen. القوم يعني عنده عنده دور كبير في في إحياء العرس وإحياء الحفلات وإحياء كل هذه المواسم البهيجة. ولا بد يكون فيها قوم ولا بد يكون فيه بارود. دليل على على الرجولة ودليل على الشهامة كذلك وفي نفس الوقت وفي أمم طن يعني في نفس الوقت يكون فيها دليل على شهومة العري العريس ولا بد يكون فيه بارود يعني في حفل زفاف في, في العرس نتاع العريس تاعنا يعني البارود حاجة البارود حاجة يعني دليل على الرجولة اللي كل هذا في كل هذا الأمر.
The couple are taken on a car parade through the streets and neighborhoods, stopping at specific locations for souvenir photos. To express their feelings toward their history and identity, Sabrina and Ali make a stop at the statue of Amir Abdel Qadir, the symbol of Algerian resistance against colonialism and founder of the modern Algerian state. They also stop for a photo opportunity under the Dardara tree, the place where the people of Mascara first swore allegiance to Amir Abdel Qadir in 1832. Sunset, they arrive at Ali's house so that Sabrina can be welcomed by her mother-in-law with dates and milk. These traditions are deeply rooted in the Mascara region. The white of the milk and the sweet taste of dates are considered a good omen for the couple and a sign of affection and welcome for the bride. Sabrina soaks up the atmosphere and the warmth of the moment, surrounded by members of her new family. الجزائر والدليل على ذلك أن هذه الرقصات هي رقصات بطولية حربية سواء في أدائها أو في لباسها حيث نجد أن الراقص أو هذا اللاعب يلبس عباءة فضفاضة مع سروال فضفاض ونسموه بالسروال اللوبيا لأنه في نفس هذا الراقص يكون في نفس الوقت فارس ولاعب إن تلمسين Rania's ceremonial exit from her parents' house is altogether more extravagant. Iban al-Qaftan was shiddat limsaniya fil arus limsaniya b'shakl wadeh, mulfit lil intibah. Iban inu hada arus limsaniya min khilal al-zay. Ala ghutil bis al-Qaftan, al-Qaftan li kunu jabuh lha, u tkun shadda, u yghattu lha wajaha bil-hayek, yani tkhurj b'ghattia bil-hayek t'limsan, tkhurj min darbaha, u hana yitab al-arus. تبدأ السهرات والموسيقى المختلفة بما فيها القرقابو والموسيقى الأندلسية الجميع يكون يستنى فيها برا يستنى خروجها وكي تخرج يبدأ لكورتاج دوروا بها في البلاد في أنحاء تلمسان كلها رانياز is a slightly more upmarket wedding and she leaves wearing the local beautiful bridal costume, an enveloped in a white silk hayek. The wedding procession moves off towards the family home of her new husband, Sofian. and their Fantasia horsemen go with them. Sofian's sisters and his recently married relatives welcome Rania, dancing to Al-Qarqabu music, all wearing the Shadda.
the Fantasia starts the public celebrations. The horsemen attract crowds, so what better way of announcing your marriage to the world? As with Sabrina and Mascara, Rania and Tlemcen is welcomed with milk and dates, a way to wish her a white and bright future with her new family. In another ritual, Rania's mother-in-law offers her a key so that Allah may open every door for her. Rania and Sofyan's wedding celebrations continue into the night. Don't forget, he has yet to meet his bride on his wedding day. But that's about to change. Dressed in a white silk burnous, the groom mounts a horse and sets off to meet his new wife accompanied by Fantasia horsemen. In another ritual handed down over the generations, Sofyan gets ready to throw his burnous to his friends amid the gunfire. And more you use. His mother sends him off with the hand of Fatma necklace to protect him from the evil eye. Dressed in a beautiful shedda, his sister wipes the sweat from his brow. Then he makes the trip on horseback to his home to meet his bride and then covers her face in the presence of guests and family. Then it's photo time for the family album. The shedda that Rania is wearing, the Tlemcen bridal costume, is so highly prized that UNESCO has put it on its list of intangible cultural heritage. It used to be worn by princesses and notables of the Ziyanid kingdom. It is made of several layers of silk and accessories, a velvet kaftan embroidered with gold thread, 
plus the pointed cap and long earrings. This is a great scene with the bride and all the female guests in their traditional costumes and mixed company with the groom just gradually dancing the night away. نسمي هاد الليلة ليلة التصديرة اللي حيث أن العروس طول الليلة وتكون تعامل عرض أزياء كل نص ساعة تلبس لبسة جديدة وتروح تغير تعود تلبس لبسة جديدة وهكذا حتى اللي تكمل الليلة يكون حواليها بزاف ناس تاخدوا صور يغنيوا معاها يقصوا معاها يفرحوا معاها Earlier in the day, Rania did her testira, a kind of bridal fashion show. This is Rania in her karaku, the wedding outfit of Algiers. Although many of the rituals and costumes are common to all traditional marriages, there are variations depending on wealth, region and social status. In another part of Tlemcen, our third groom, Abdel Rahman, is getting ready for the biggest day in his life with his mates at the barber shop. New life, new haircut. Abdul Rahman's wedding to Khadija will be bigger than the other two we've seen and held at a special venue. Khadija is escorted by armed horsemen and she arrives at the venue completely covered by a white hayek with her mother and close friends. Algeria is a modern country, but ritual runs deep in wedding celebrations. Here, the recently married female relatives surround Khadija holding the hayek, while underneath, another woman draws the red circles with white spots on her cheeks. And when she's unveiled, she's wearing the shedda, the Tlemcen bridal costume covered in heavy jewelry and hundreds of pearls. Everything at this wedding seems bigger, more resplendent and extravagant than Sabrina and Rania's celebrations. Then Prince Charming arrives on his white steed. Cue more you use. Mum welcomes him. And Khadija gets a kiss on the forehead. And then the two of them get carried shoulder high in decorated thrones called Tufur. There will be food after this ceremony, plenty of it, probably. But for now, it's hard to imagine a bigger, noisier, or full on event. Well, 
there you have it, the whole gamut of traditional wedding festivities in Algeria. In one family celebration, the richness of Algerian customs and heritage, clothing and costumes, art, music and food, all rooted in history, but still very much alive among families like these in cities like Tlemcen and Mascara today. <laughs>